<laughs> okay, yes, carbon dividends are something that I think most people don't know about. And I want to make people aware. My my number one intention in, in, a, in what we're about to present is to get the idea of what carbon dividends are in everybody's head. And so what I did was I, a few months ago, I found a video that belongs to a Canadian museum. And it had, it's like five minute commercial in front of it about their donor program. And by the time you watched all this, you didn't even want to care about who was, whatever, what their guest was. And, you know, they basically, anyway, I redid, I cut that front part off, redid the video, put some, um, you know, slides in it and um, just explain, you know, text explain, explanatory. And then just for fun, I, I went to the website and I, I looked at their copyright um, uh, re requirements and I was missing one thing. I was really, you know, I didn't really care. I was gonna do this anyway, but I, I, I went through their list and I all, all I had to do was put the web address you know, to make this whole thing like approved, approved by them. And so I ran back and I threw a slide in there with their web address on. So this is like, so the, my video is kind of like official. So, cause I followed all their copyright uh, requirements, but what we're going to watch cause, cause it's about 20 minutes long. And a lot of it's kind of just, um, uh, you know, kind of in uh, climate change 101. So we're going to skip that part. So I, I cut it down to two parts. And the first part is going to introduce the video. That part I haven't changed because I want to know people know what it is. And then we'll, we'll go right to the second part and play that. And then we'll see where we are. So go ahead and, and play that first slide and then uh, go on to the ne next one here. Let's go. An event that took place at the museum. Um, if you look at per capita emissions, Australia has passed the United States, <laughs> and Canada is uh, is is uh, growing. I mean, you're you're almost as bad as we are uh, in the U.S. on a per capita emissions, um, and of course, the rest of the world. That's where the big increases are coming because we used fossil fuels to raise our standard of living and, and they want to do the same thing and they have every right to do that and if they don't have alternatives they're going to do it the same way that we did and that's burning fossil fuels and that's that's what they're doing um, in a paper we published last year young people's burden we show that Unless we begin to reduce emissions very rapidly, we're handing young people a situation where they can only stabilize climate by sucking CO2 out of the atmosphere. And we show that the cost of that, if we stay on business as usual, is going to be in the hundreds of trillions of dollars with any of the technologies that we know about. And that's just implausible. So we're, we're in danger of handing them a situation where there's, there's really no, um, doesn't appear to be any way out. And, and the, the tragedy of this situation is it's not necessary. You know, if we would, uh, so we looked in that paper, we show different scenarios for the future, uh, continuing uh, emissions increase. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. Can I go backward? Um, or what I meant to do was push this. So continuing business as usual or flattening out emissions or decreasing emissions 3% a year or 6% a year. If you were to reduce emissions 3% a year, then uh, the warming would peak at less than one and a half degrees and then slowly decline even without sucking CO2 out of the atmosphere. So it's still uh, 
physically possible to, to stop uh, further warming. But it requires uh, beginning to reduce emissions. And the, the problem is that fossil fuels are the cheapest energy. They appear to be cheapest because they don't include their cost to society. The, just the cost of air pollution on human health, if you would only include that, you would make uh, the competing cleaner energies much more competitive. Uh, and instead, we're even subsidizing uh, the fossil fuels. So the solution is, that's required is make the price of fossil fuels honest by including their cost to society. Uh, and you could do that in a very simple way, just collect the money from the small number of sources, the domestic mines and the ports of entry. So it costs almost nothing to collect it. And uh, if you would give that money to the public, an equal amount to all legal residents of the country, then most people would come out ahead, about 70% with the present distribution of energy use. Um, and th that would, and we could move rapidly on that 3% per year reduction rate. In fact, the economic studies show that if you had a $10 a ton carbon fee rising $10 a ton each year, by the end of 10 years, the emissions would go down 30%, um, which is more rapid than 3% per year. Uh, but uh, you have to actually do that. You can't do it with some gimmicky thing like cap and trade, which does almost nothing in practice. Globally, it doesn't do anything. The emissions just continue to go up. Uh, so. This, and this, by the way, is the only viable international solution. Uh, we've tried the cap-and-trade route, uh, the Kyoto Protocol. It, it, it doesn't do anything. Uh, but if, you, if the United States or Europe or China would decide to have a across-the-board rising carbon fee, they can impose that practically globally by means of saying we're going to put border duties on products from countries that don't have an equivalent carbon fee. That's an enormous incentive for those other countries to have their own fee so they can collect the money themselves rather than have us collect money at the border. Um, economists say that would work, but uh, politicians don't want to. Okay, so that was the basic idea. And uh, James goes on from there to, uh, you know, talk about, uh, actually, there's an organization, Americans for Carbon Dividends, and he talks about the website, and he asks if there are some people in the audience, and there were, so they, you know, they talk. So let's move on to the next slide. And it, in, uh, I, I'd uh, suggest anybody interested in this, uh, Google, you know, after our show's over, of course, Americans for Carbon Dividends. And you can find, go to their website. And uh, yeah, so check it out. One thing they have on the website is this, is this video, which is very short and very good. It's just, it's just a commercial, so let's play that. Want to get something done on climate change? Carbon Dividends is the bipartisan climate solution. Endorsed by business leaders, environmentalists, economists, and scientists, Carbon Dividends will cut emissions in half by 2035, protect family budgets, and create good-paying clean energy and manufacturing jobs. It's time to end the gridlock in Washington and start solving problems together. Carbon Dividends is the bipartisan climate solution. The time is right now. Okay, so you know, to keep things, oh, oh, we have this one. Yes, I do want to talk about this. So this is the idea. Everybody in the in the uh, country would get one of these, and you know, Marcus, you would have a different flag on yours. But if you came and visit, it'd be it'd be okay. Well, you you'd be getting the money to be able to buy it, so it'd work. But what I want to do is is let's click and go to this link, and it's a link that I, I have a public file on my website and it's a PDF document I want everybody to see. And uh, 
Here it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is a very nice white paper that explains uh, everything that James basically said in the, in the video. And um, I just want to make people aware of this. And so if you, this is another thing to, to Google, you know, after the show, come back to this slide. And if you were to Google that title, you'd probably find it somewhere. Um, I should probably put a link. Well, there is a, the link if you look at it, you can... I, I don't know. Anyway, so let's let's um, Amos, why don't you take over? Uh, you got, you are are continuing continuing this. I looked things over, so it very much dovetails with what I'm doing very nicely. So let's just keep moving. All right. So basically, let me let me explain a little bit more about the dividends because we said we debated, but it's important to understand what the proposal is and how it differs from others. So we discussed. Uh, carbon tax previously and uh, last week and uh, basically there is a consensus among scientists among uh, economists at this point that uh, uh, we need carbon tax to uh, address global c climate uh, crisis and, and the effects of um, carbon uh, and the reason is that uh, when you're paying for, for gas for your heat or for anything you're, you're not uh, paying for externalities. Their externalities are things that are costing someone, but they're not costing the uh, the oil manufacturers or the uh, oil power uh, energy energy uh, manufacturers. Uh, they're hidden. So if people get uh, sick from the soot, or uh, there's climate change as a result, and we we lose uh, money on that, that is not built into the price. So the economists came and said, well, why don't we put that into the price once we actually make the price of the product more, um, more uh, uh, representative of the actual, the true cost, then the price is going to go up and it will affect how people behave. It's going to reduce the use of uh, energy and, and fossil fuels and uh, reduce emissions, therefore. Um, so basically, they came up with, with that. That that was the tax tax um, the tax plan, the tax carbon tax, carbon fees. Uh, they figured out uh, they could do uh, fifty dollars uh, easily per ton, which would uh, make a huge uh, difference and and start reducing things uh, significantly. Um, and then, and then some people took it further. They they said, well, we don't have the buy-in of Republicans, and uh, in in the U.S. the is the, the the biggest debate is happening in the U.S. and the U.S. is the most influential country. If the U.S. goes in one direction, it probably will affect other countries down the line. Uh, so so let's address it. So what they came up with was the idea of not that they wouldn't tax the carbon. They still tax the carbon, except they're saying we're going to do dividends. We're going to give every citizen in the country a certain uh, flat uh, amount that's, that's uh, taken from these companies that are producing energy and give it back to people. And that should have wide uh wide uh bipartisan support um and so forth and and so there is also the idea of gradually raising it so you start with a with a, a carbon tax at a certain level and then you you slowly you build it up every year um the the second point is that the carbon dividend uh, uh is paid to americans um and is funded one by 100 percent of the of the revenue. So everything that's being taken as a tax or fee goes back to the to the uh, individuals. Um, the point three is an interesting one, and that is that uh, there's going to be a significant regulatory uh, rollback. So in order to sweeten it, because they they had a position at that point saying, well, it's going to hurt poor uh, Americans more than anyone else. Why? Because poor Americans spend a bigger percentage of their uh, money, of their income, on energy. So it's going to have a, a bigger effect. 
the the obviously if you uh, raise the taxes it's not just going to be the companies that are, are shouldering it they're going to pass all of that costs to the consumer so if you raise the tax you you uh, you, you uh, pull a fee from uh, energy manufacturing uh, company energy generating company that fee is then going to be passed down down to the consumer and of course that's that's the case however here here they came and said uh, well we're going to give the dividends okay you're going to give the dividends and some some of the point is that you're giving a flat uh, return so the people in the bottom of the economic uh, uh, layer that uh, are normally not going to be using that as much energy as people at the high uh, end of the of the economic scale are going to pay uh, less for energy and therefore the dividend is going to cover them and some so they're going to make more money than they're than they're spending on energy it's it changes when you're going to the higher uh, higher income brackets but uh, that is that is the argument but still they couldn't get everybody on so they they incorporated the idea that they would um, compensate for that by rolling back uh, rolling back regula- regulation so and that got a lot of industry on board and, and in a moment I, I will I will show you uh, who is supporting all of this um, the fourth point is that this is a, a step that they uh, they boast can be done unilaterally it doesn't need an international agreement the US can do it right now and once the US does it it will create a domino effect is that's the that's the claim because a country that has uh, uh, doesn't have uh, mitigation for carbon emissions will have to pay a border adjustment fee to sell something to the U.S., for example, where there is such a, a, a regulation, such a, an arrangement. Uh, and so they will have to pay the difference so that there is no advantage given to buying uh, energy products from other countries where the where the generation is dirtier, where the saving on on, on this clean aspect. So that border adjustment, because because it's being uh, uh, implemented to other countries, say Japan wants to sell a certain uh, amount of energy. Um, they have to pay a hundred dollars per per uh, uh, per ton that this uh, uh, of pollution that this will generate, and so rather than that, they will come to the conclusion it is more advantageous for them to do the same and and collect the dividend, collect the taxes and share it to their citizens as dividends rather than paying it to the U.S. as a as a adjustment tax. The problem with that is that there is no saying that they won't go the route that uh, other uh, things are, are, that are that are being taxed with tariffs are are going through. So basically, they may choose to battle it with a trade war rather than go the other way and and incorporate it into their own model. And that is and something that's not addressed. A quick question. Meanwhile, uh, uh, can you please uh, tell us who is supporting? What companies are supporting this? Uh, uh, the Baker Schulz plan. So, as I said, this is the Baker Schulz plan. Um, so that's basically Baker and Schulz are conservatives. Here's uh, Schulz. No, no, no. What companies? What companies? You, you, you said companies yes. would support this. I would like to know what companies. Okay, well, here here you will be surprised. The companies that are Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Go on, please. So that is that is uh, that is my point. The, the, uh, what I think is is attracting those companies is the fact that they're willing to roll back, um, roll back legislation or, or regulation of these industries uh, which in some I assume that their conclusion is that is that's where most of their cost is and if they could skirt those issues 
they could one idea be... about uh, rolling back the regulations is to generate greater innovation. So essentially, you're, you're, you're replacing the regulations by the financial incentive because this whole thing is working because everybody wants to save money. Right. No, that's that's an argument that comes down the line, and I, I'll address that. But but basically, what I think is, it's very, it's kind of uh, the detail is in the the devil is in the detail, uh, and we're we're wait, willing to waive regulations. They're saying as a, as a defense to this uh, proposal that it's only addressing regulations relating to carbon emissions, but. Uh, there are things that could be related that I don't know if it's going to cover or not. For example, exploitation of workers, natives in, in uh, drilling, uh, the pollutions of uh, leakage or pipeline breaking, uh, the uh, uh, things well, that's like that. a different kind of regulation. You know, I would confuse human rights with, with how they're drilling. But that's a good question, whether this would protect them, whether they they could incorporate it in such a way that it would protect them uh, or not. And it, 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 you do have to be a little cautious when you see uh, um, people that are very conservative, like uh, Baker and Schultz. Here's what Schultz said about it, a carbon dividend policy could spur large education, the greenhouse gas emission reductions in the greenhouse gas emission than all of President Obama's climate policies. At the same time, our plan would strengthen the economy, help working class Americans, and promote national security, all while reducing regulation and shrinking the size of government. Talking about uh, it having a greater effect, Here's their projection. Obama's is the green line. Trump's was the 14, minus 40%, 14%, which were, got worse. Uh, uh, and then you have uh, the projection if they had the Baker-Schultz plan, which could meet uh, Paris and some. Uh, so that's their argumentation. Um, and they have even uh, Paulson say this is a fundamentally conservative plan. One that showcases the principles of free markets and limited government. I'm a proud Republican and believe it is important to protect those principles and always strive for evidence-based policymaking. This plan provides the roadmap to do just that. So, yeah, it's... it's um, I mean... I'm not necessarily against it because there are conservatives for it. That would be insanity. What I'm saying is we have to move in ca with caution and, and really understand what the implications of, of everything is. Now, to your point, uh, uh, to your point as to the innovation, yeah. If if you were talking, and this goes back to to counter uh, for. Uh, argumentation against carbon tax because the the critics say, well, it's um, dividends, schmividends. Sh what you're doing is you're raising taxes that's going to come to you. It's going to affect the citizen, and then you're going to give them the money back, but they're still paying more for the the uh, energy. So you haven't done much. It's like a sleight of hand. Well, I think we've done a huge, I think that the change is enormous. I don't agree that we've done nothing at all. Uh, I have a jaded view about why conservatives are for this. Can we hear me? Yeah, but let, yes. me, let yeah. me just finish that argument that, that the, <clears throat> that the uh, that's the, the argument against it is the criticism. But but what I'd like to, to correct on this is that, yeah, maybe that would have been the case if we didn't have alternatives. So basically, you can buy the energy or not, and you kind of need to get the energy, so you're going to pay whatever it, it takes. That's not the case, though, because people are going to have alternatives in the form of green energy. Once the green energy alternatives break even at some point and, and you can save money, they're actually going to make more money on the dividends that are taken on, on carbon tax than 
they would uh, they would pay to the energy generation. So that that argument is is kind of flawed. But go ahead. Okay, you know my jaded view about why conservatives are for this is because we can do this and they can stay conservative. You see. You don't have to become progressive. You don't have to change your values to participate. You get your credit card. And then if, if the energy, is, if the carbon's really expensive, then what you do is you, you don't buy any more than you have to. And, you, it, and if there is a green alternative, you take that. If there isn't, you, you minimize your, your impact. Uh, you consume the, the smallest amount of carbon that you can, because you want to save the rest of that money, because that's, you know, and essentially, when you really think about it, this is the only thing that can work. If we have a carbon tax without this, the economy gets depressed. You can't tax, raise the price on carbon without compensating people in some way, because you're not paying them anymore. So what are you going to do? You've got to give the money back to them. And, um, you know, the, the details, there may be some minor details to work out, but fundamentally, this is what you got to do. But it is such a huge change that people can't wrap their heads around it. I confess, when I first came across this idea, free money, you're giving people free money, then you think about it. No, you're not. Actually, you're giving them their birthright, you know, kind of, because you are polluting their environment. So, you know, and nobody's going to get rich off this, obviously, you know, <laughs> well, no, the maybe, surplus is negative. The surplus is negative. I think that's, it's a great that's idea. The important, that's the important thing to understand is that the surface, the surplus is at least initially negative. So uh, you're not really uh, benefiting people, perhaps maybe the people at the bottom of the economic scale because their use of energy is lower, but you're definitely it will cost more. However, that's that's uh, that's a way like the dividends is not a way to change the the scale of, of uh, where the money goes, but rather to make the policies of, of taxing carbon more palatable uh, to to the uh, to the public. Well, Guys, one if... issue is how are you going to set the tax? And, and one proposal is by you know citizens committees. I think that's James's plan. You know, guys, uh, this this one thing, you know, the idea sounds interesting, you know, but what really makes me suspicious is, you know, about the corporate founding members and the individual founding members, you know. Those companies and people are not suspicious, you know, to necessarily act in favor of uh, of uh, green policies or green energy, you know. Uh, you know, I'm scratching my head and I'm trying to... to where, where is the loophole for them? Marcus, you can relax. <laughs> yeah, I can, okay. Yeah, because um, that, that James Hansen paper, white paper I presented, that was given to Congress and some action was taken on it in like 2017 and a bunch of activity and then then nothing it was sent to a committee where it has been living in obscurity ever since so you know the idea that you know um, corporations are really on board with this don't go there you know you've got some people who are agreeing with the james baker plan but in general uh industry does not want this because <laughs> who makes out the people okay 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 I, I i got you this would mean, you know, if the industry doesn't like this plan, but there must be some tool of threat that they would, which would oppose on them if they would not agree to this. I, I can guess, right? Well, they see where I, the winds are blowing. Some something will have to be done about carbon. They know that the cap and trade has failed. They the Kyoto has failed. Paris is not doing enough. <laughs> Uh, and they know not. that people are eventually it's going to blow over. So they uh, they have to minimize uh, minimize uh, the damage and at the same time maybe score some points on something else. And that is that is I think what is going on here. The lack of regulations would benefit them 
in in some ways that uh, that are perhaps more costly to them if they have to do uh, investigation on on uh, uh, exhaustive I guess, investigation for drilling or whatever, and now they they would have uh, green light to do much more drilling if they like, as long as they pay the tax. Maybe it's worth it to them. I don't know what their calculation is. We don't have those brains, economic brains that are working on their behalf, but they're, of course, not doing something that is opposing to their interests. Here's a, a, a clip from uh, Andrew Young uh, just exactly about this congressional uh, attempt to do and, and the clarifying his positions. And in a way, that kind of like he unified that with his uh, universal minimum income idea uh, those dividends would serve both both ends. But he, he... What would Andrew Yang as president facilitate in terms of combating climate change? How many of you all study economics? But it's a popular major here. Um, so if you study economics, you know that one of the biggest problems is economic externalities, where someone's not paying the cost. And the biggest externality facing us right now is carbon emissions. If I'm a company and I pollute, um, that doesn't cost me, that costs everyone. So one of the big moves we have to make, in my view, is to actually price in that externality. Uh, I'm for a carbon fee, a carbon tax and dividend, and then use that money to start moving us towards uh, renewable and sustainable sources of energy. If you have a price on carbon and then you ratchet up that price progressively, then you'll see a lot of these companies invest meaningfully in reducing their emissions in a way that they don't right now because the money's not in it. So I'll just stop you for a second because you obviously have thought about uh, economic issues a lot and in great detail and you've written a lot about them. For people who are watching this who haven't thought that through or don't know how that works, what, what, how does that happen? Does that mean everybody gets to emit a certain amount of carbon and beyond that you have to buy credits or you just pay for the amount of carbon that you're emitting all the time which forces you to actually reduce it? So we would have a pricing, the, the carbon fee initially would be $40 a ton. So it's immediate and if you're emitting anywhere from a ton up then you start paying into the system. But then you have an economic incentive immediately to try and reduce those emissions, try and streamline your operations so that they're, they're uh, cleaner, and more sustainable. And you would do this uh, you, you become president, and maybe you don't have a compliant Congress. How do well, you get this done? Well, I'm happy to say that a carbon uh, fee and dividend is a bipartisan idea. There are many Republicans that are behind it. Uh, it came this close to passing, even in this Congress, which is really saying something, with this president. <laughs> it came this close. So uh, as president, I believe that we can get that through, because this is something that even industry leaders have been calling for at this point. So, uh, yeah, even M M Milton Friedman is, is on board with that and has promoted it. So uh, there it is. I mean, uh, it's, you can decide on your own, but I, I think I think I'm not. But find out that about idea. it. What's that? Find out about it. Everybody. Everybody should find out about this. Everybody should understand uh, understand how this is structured. Here's another video that may, may help uh, clarify some. It's a short. Yeah, this is a really video. good one. If we needed a reminder of climate change, the scorching summer Europe just had in July was just the sort of extreme weather scientists say is becoming more frequent. To bring carbon emissions under control, more and more leaders now agree with one thing. We must go further. We must strive for more. A two-step approach is needed to reduce CO2 emissions by 2030 by 50, if not 55%. The simplest way to do this is through a tax on carbon. If carbon intensive activities and products become more expensive, we'll consume less of them and emissions will be lower than otherwise. But there is one big problem. Higher carbon prices can cause a big hit to the living standards of those already worse off. That's because poorer people often spend a larger share of their incomes than the rich do on carbon intensive things such as petrol or heating fuel. When the French government tried to increase France's carbon tax on transport fuel and heating oil, the reaction from what became the Yellow Vest movement was explosive. So here's the dilemma. We have to cut carbon emissions, but the way to do so hurts the poorest. 
It seems we have to choose between climate catastrophe and social disaster. What we need is a just transition to the low carbon economy. Some French economists think they know how. What we had in mind was just to show that it's possible to design a system that makes almost everybody in the poorest half of the population uh, as well off or better off with the tax than without. That was the point. This is how it would work. When a driver fills up her car with petrol or diesel, the price she pays is made up of two parts. There is the cost of supplying the fuel itself. Then on top of that is tax linked to the CO2 emitted while driving. It is this tax that most economists think should go up to encourage people to reduce their use of fossil fuels, which contribute to climate change. While people in cities have the option of public transport, if a carbon tax drives up prices at the pump, people in rural areas often have no alternative to taking the car and often don't have the means to change their car for a more fuel efficient one. But what if the tax, instead of disappearing into the government budget, was immediately returned to people in cash? Such a carbon tax to, to be completely, to, to be well perceived by, by people and also to be just, uh, it should be designed such that the revenues of the tax do not go into the budget, public uh, budget, general budget, but they are kept to, to be redistributed to people to alleviate the, uh, the regressive effects. Let's look at how this would work for a typical low-income family in France. Marion lives in a rural area with her husband and two children. They're not so well off. Their income is only in the second tenth of all households. They use oil heating, and have a diesel car. In the scheme proposed by the French economists, Marion's family would be paying 72 euros a month more in carbon taxes than a typical family in a mid-sized town, which has electric heating and no car. That would be a big hit to their living standards if it was the whole policy. But because Marion and her husband have low incomes, they would also receive a carbon check worth 125 euros a month. Put together, this policy would leave the family with 630 euros more every year to spend. Uh, the problem is that the Ministry of Finance needs money. <laughs> and so the, 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 their incentive to, 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 to put the tax and keep the money is very, very strong. And so it's more there that there is a difficulty, I think, to make people understand that uh, this is not a financing tax, it is just an incentive to reduce emissions so they don't have to keep the money. The hope is that once vulnerable households see that the policy makes them financially better off, their opposition to higher carbon taxes will wane away. With the climate emergency, there's no way around making carbon more expensive. But it's only if higher carbon taxes are also fair that they will be politically viable. I think that was very, very succinct, succinct and, and well done. But uh, yeah, so basically, and so now the questions that we will have to think is just don't buy it all like uh, hook and sinker or whatever it's called. Uh, sink and hooker? No. <laughs> what? Uh, what do you mean? Don't don't just uh, buy everything in one, uh, like as, as it's presented. Think about... Gonna the aspects. Yes. Do we do, we do I, the div dividends as a flat, uh, f flat amount for every citizen? In which case, it was going to be very min minimal impact or negligible for the uh, higher. I got it. Or you you only give it to the bottom half, but then you may lose support of some people that are that are in the middle. Or you uh, or do you? do a combination do you do you give dividends uh, partly dividends and then partly uh invest in uh uh governmental well you know uh, where i am on development 100 dividend so 100%. you don't think that we could benefit from having something like the nih of energy where uh, the government would uh, develop and research uh, energy and then make that available to uh, to the industry. I mean that, that that's a separate issue. That's a no, separate no. Issue. I mean it's not. You have a certain no, part is, of money. I'll explain why. To, yeah. See what by carbon dividends, what you're doing is is you are putting 
I don't even like to call it a tax. I just prefer, but we have to use the word tax to, to explain where they, that they do, they do collect the money, okay? If you are going to implement a carbon tax, you are going to ruin the economy that you are implementing, that you are putting that tax on. Per, be, because the whole world doesn't have that tax. You are disadvantaging, you are putting your people at a disadvantage by taking all that money and, and turning it back over to them, you, you're, you're making the damage to the economy the absolute minimum. If you take, took, if you only kick back 80%, oh, you've opened the door to all sorts of corruption, lack of transparency, and you're defeating the entire purpose, which is to preserve the economy. And that's really why conservatives are for it. You know, because you don't have to be, it doesn't matter what side or what you believe, everybody believes in saving money. And saving money will change your behavior, unless you're crazy. I got two questions to you guys. First of all, you know, um, f from what I saw in the clip, um, they say um, that the money goes directly back to, uh, to, to the individual person, right? Yes. So this means in the budget, Uh, there's a certain amount is missing, right? It's in the end. Up. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, follow my thought. You know, this means you have you have less available in the budget because you know you, you got to no. pay uh, every individual you know a certain amount. Okay, no, it's the same amount. So, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Okay. And this, the plan is, you know, to help mostly uh, uh, the poor, uh, the poorer families and the poor individual. So. You got you got a less big budget, you know. So you gotta you gotta save somewhere, right? You know, you, you money is not growing on trees, you know. So you gotta so you gotta find ways to save money, you know, to get everything fulfilled, what you want to do, you know, with the money you you calculated, which which is now less than before. So what do you think? Uh, who would uh, who would be punished by this? I would like to say punished, or you know, who's who's suffering from this? You know, no, Marcus, who would be taxed? Uh, who would have has to pay more instead? You know, no, Marcus, you, you, the well, the tax, the carbon tax, is a, an ad added tax, so it's not it's not a, already in the budget. It's not part of the existing tax uh, structure. Okay, so it's basically whatever they raise with that tax is separate from taxation and goes directly back as dividends so there's no okay impact. it would it, it it would be a tax put on the prices on on the, on the oil pri prices sorry right right at okay the point of origin they okay tax, they tax carbon at the point of origin i see of I orange see. origin of the of the uh, uh generation of the pollution not of the it's the highest You put it on the highest level, so you don't you don't tax no, you actually, the uh, drilling. Tax the source, yes. It's the easiest place to get, to get it, and ev and then everything else rolls downhill. Then then you're letting conventional economy. You know the price of everything is going to go up. Well, But the, then yeah, the the, the getting, way the proposal you're works you're getting the now, tax, or... it's offset. The way the, 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 just to, just to make it just to clarify, the way the proposal works now though is they're putting the uh, the. Uh, A tax on the uh, pollution generating uh, aspect. So it's the highest level. It's the generation of the of the electricity or of the energy, rather than the extraction of the salt. No, salt you do it fuel. at the extraction. The, the, That's uh, not what they're proposing. But uh, uh, the dividend plan is very clear on that. You know, and this is this is like our first segment. You know, uh, you know about the ideas being watered down, being taken into the Uh, you know, mainstream, liberal, uh, you know, whatever you, know, because, you want to call it, away from the more radical, like do it this way because it makes sense. Uh, I think I think I, I don't I don't want to say that the idea is bad. I think the idea is good, you know, because but but I still, you know, I look at the at the names of the companies who are in this, you know. And if you tell me now that the tax is uh, is put on the the already existing oil price, you know, I see for the moment nothing changes much for those companies, you know, because uh, they they would uh, they would get the the same profit, you know, as least as at least when it starts. And this is why I'm asking. 
asking, where are the loopholes? Because none of them, I guarantee you, none of them wants to wants to pay more money than they ultimately have to. We saw this. Well, how many times did we saw uh, see this? You know, and look, Michael Bloomberg is on it also, and. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Hawking. I know if they're referring to this Stephen Hawking, I don't. I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm skeptic. You know, because it. It sounds too good to be true. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, huh. I, I think that the the, the that sweet way. the candy is the regulation uh, rollback. I think I really think that's that's where where uh, what they have to gain from it. That's the compromise. Hmm. All right. But we, we, we would we would uh, we would stick to the topic, uh, uh, Keith and Amos, because as I said, the the idea is is good, you know. But the question is, in how far will they try to get out of it, you know, and find loopholes you know, to get away with the business as usual? You well, know? for one, that's exactly well, the why French we clip, have to... you know, made the made the French clip made the point that you know, of course, they're good, the politicians are going to try to steal the money. And that's why I'm kind of adamant about the 100%, 100%, 100%, and repeat it until you, you get sick of me saying it, because if you let, you know, that, that's how it works. That, that, you know, that's how we lose. That's how, why we have done nothing about the environment over all these years, because exactly, little, exactly. Victory and, here, and it's taken away. So, and, and if you would, say, would you say that the NIH uh, model has failed? <laughs> Where are we? We're, we're in a mess. Everything has failed. I mean, the, that's, the, that's essentially the proof of why we have to do something else. And, and, I, th but, but and I think in the end... Yeah. Oh, sorry, I interrupted you. Go on, please. No, no, I, I'm just like, just the, the NIH uh, has, has uh, afforded us the ability to generate the COVID drugs much faster than, uh, than we would have otherwise. It would have taken years and they've like shortened it to like a year just based on the fact that we have this governmental institution that's do doing uh, research for the pure purpose of research and, and offering it up. So um, I, I don't think that it was a bad, that it is a bad model. I, I think it has to be weighed. Uh, and I, I see your points as well uh, as to why you say it should be 100% uh, dividends, but uh, I'm, I'm not yet convinced. All right, interesting. You know, it's an, it's an interesting model, but we we all have uh, our hesitations. You know, from uh, from different perspectives. And uh, well, I think it's we should. Uh, uh, do, do we have more in uh, maybe for next week, Keith? Do we have well, more? And if we're going to cut it cut it here. I do want to say what I was going to cover because uh, the next se segment is somewhat timely. So um, let's at least start it. You know, and a week, mission accomplished though. Amos and I have established that what dividends are. And yes, so I, exactly. You know, find out what they are and get it, <laughs> you know, because it is a hard idea to accept. Like I say, well, first I heard of it. I said, what? No, no, no. Then you think about it. Wait a minute. This is yeah, magic. Yeah. This is magic. Yeah. Do it. I can, I can, I can, I can only tell what 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 Keith just uh, said, you know, to our audience, you know, go and do research for yourself. We, I hope we will definitely, Amos, or Keith, you will definitely stay on topic what this concerns, you know, to to maybe get more background in information. You know, I'm very curious, you know, my my point is, you know, uh, if I look at the company's names, you know, and I think. It is too good to 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 be true, you know. There must there must be something behind it which helps them, and uh, maybe it was maybe it really was uh, that they uh, that they had to look into the gun, you know, where it was said, you know, you can either accept this or that, you know, and then they finally said, okay, then we go with that one. But I don't know, you know, and it was would be would be great to learn more about it from you guys. And there are organizations that are still uh, generating content that is uh, anti, anti this scheme, and one wonders who who is funding those. So that's another thing to further investigate. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same companies that put their names on it that are also playing on the other side and criticizing the whole scheme, uh, and trying to to uh, contradict the idea of taxes altogether. But we'll. Remains to be seen. Yeah. 